Um, to begin with, I just want to say some thank yous. Um, the organisation of this event has been um, interesting, to say the least. And I just want to say um, thank you to lots of people, because literally without their help, uh, we couldn't be here. So to the Brunel team, uh, a colleague of mine, Dr. Anastasia Adagnostu, who's hiding there, um, and Dr. Armin Keshefi, better known as a, &A Travel, uh, the champions will have heard lots about them because they've been organising visas, um, flights, taxis, etc. So uh, um, thank you for all the hard work uh, that you put in there. Um, Ella Heaney and Julie Whitaker and Sandy Bradley are three of the most important people at Brunel University, where I come from, because they're the ones with the credit cards. So without them, we wouldn't have been able to pay for anything. Um, to the Catania team, Professor Roberto Barbara and his team, and uh, uh, Miss Patricia Strino, uh, with her great dissemination team. Uh, they've been responsible for, from Roberto's side, the Hackfest, and from Patricia's side, the, the wonderful videos you've been seeing. Um, and then the CSIR team, Dr. Bruce Becker. Um, everybody seems to know Bruce everywhere you go, um, which is wonderful. And again, Bruce has put some extremely hard work in. Uh, the last time I saw him last night was when he was running off to order pizza for students, uh, which I've paid for, apparently. So, <laughs> so our, gener our generosity knows no bounds. Um, and I, I put in originally uh, Miss Lorna Cialoni. Um, I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your surname. Uh, and her team. Uh, now, Lorna is the local representative at CSIR uh, that processed all the payments and et cetera, et cetera, here. And I put her team. Um, Lorna is her team. Uh, and Lorna is incredibly hardworking. I'd like to uh, officially say thank you very much for all the support that she's given, her, has given us here. Um, and also, there are other people in CSIR. Uh, Juanita, who's the lodge manager for the, the student accommodation, has helped out wonderfully, uh, etc. Uh, to the champions, I'd just like to say thank you because we are today, it's the first day of this event, celebrating your accomplishments. Um, and. Um, our project wouldn't be anything without your hard work, so thank you to you and, of course, everybody else, because I'm sure I've missed somebody. Now, I'm going to quickly go through um, what we've done. So, as I say, we started two years ago, um, and this is another in a series of projects that are trying to raise the profile of e-infrastructures in Africa. Um, now, the idea of e-infrastructure seems to be becoming more and more common, but it's still a foreign term to a lot of people. So basically, e-infrastructures are networks of many, many different things, but there are networks that enable high-performance computing, high-performance networking, um, access to computational resources such as computational grids and clouds, many, many software services, and lots of data services from data sources to scientific literature to sensors linked through Internet of Things, um, and many, many more. But the key thing is that these are presented as a single point of access to the scientist to use many, many things. The problem is, however, these are still extremely complicated to use. And they are very successful in the area of computational biology, computational physics, because people who work in that area tend to be domain specialists, but also aren't frightened to programming. However, the rest of the world, the normal people, as I like to put it, um, can't access these very well because they are very difficult to master and run. So, um, over the last few years, um, two research groups in particular in Europe have been pushing the idea of science gateways, and we've been lucky to work with one very, very successful team, the Catania team um, in Italy. So science gateways are basically, well, if this is so complicated, let's put a web-based front end on the front that is tailored for the scientists to use easily. And there's some examples I've got there um, that are taken from this project, and you're going to see more of these over the next couple of days. Um, but what's very interesting is more and more science gateways are being deployed as mobile applications. And of course, in Africa, that's tremendously important because there's a huge number of mobile applications being developed. And this is uh, one in particular you're going to see today and tomorrow. The Kenyan Public Health Gateway is an excellent example of mobile access to 
uh, and the infrastructure. However, we didn't think that's enough because, well, as the title of the project is, it's all about energizing science. Um, in my own experience, um, we can present the benefits of infrastructures, we can present the benefits of easy access to the infrastructures, but what's missing is, what's the motivation? So during the project, we developed a philosophy about open science. So the question is, how do we raise the profile of the excellent work done by African scientists across the continent? How do we raise that profile on the world stage? And we argue very strongly in this project by helping scientists to do that, by using ICT, such as e-infrastructures, we can accomplish this and really, really energize the already active science in Africa. And this is one of our major outputs. In the next talk, Roberta will talk more about this, but this is the Open Science Commons for Africa, but indeed for anywhere else. And it consists of many, many different areas, but essentially an e-infrastructure knowledge base, a set of open access repository technologies, a set of science gateway technologies, and then important are commons for people to dis discuss um, these issues, and then online courses and training to learn how to use this. Um, and as I say, uh, Roberta will go through this in more detail shortly. But this gives us the background to the most important thing in our, um, our research, which is not um, the technology, but it's the people. So we have a virtuous circle of producing educational materials, which are freely available, then using those to train people, and we've had successes in the e-research hackfests um, across the continent. And then from that, the services that come out, we add that to the infrastructure and produce more educational materials and more training. And right in the heart of this are the champions that have received the training and are producing more and more services in their own right. So where have we come from to get here? Well, this is the latest in about 10 years of activities in e-research, uh, sorry, infrastructure research in Africa. We've made many different accomplishments on the way. And one of the most important things was the development of a science gateway demonstrator in the last project, the Africa Grid Science Gateway, that you'll see more and more of um, over the next few days. This builds on a whole bunch of all other flagship projects over the years, and these are just here for reference in case you spot any that you know. But essentially, there's been a golden thread of African infrastructure research going since um, I started one in 2000, and I'm just looking for it, 2009. And prior to that, the FEAST study in 2008. Those have been contributing, and indeed the FEAST study founded Africa Connect programs. Uh, and again, we contribute to the direction of those research. So our project, we started two years ago, as I said. It's a collaboration between those institutes. So I'm from Brunel University, London. Um, and to put that on the map, uh, we're just north of London Heathrow. So you can spot us when it's not raining in England as you come in and land. Just look north. We've got the Ubuntu Net Alliance represented by Chris just over there. And they've been great in spreading our word over East and Southern Africa. We've got the Western Central Research and Education Network, WACRAN, represented by OMO, who's arriving later. We've got a great partner in CSIR, which is one of the reasons we're here, and in particular, Bruce. Uh, we've got guys at KTH, and some of the students are here, and Amal Sess is representing uh, that institute in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, we're working with a, leading, a leader in digital healthcare and the infrastructures, Karolinska. Uh, that's again in Stockholm, and Yaren is here representing that. Um, of course, there's Catania. I mean, without Catania, we couldn't do anything technological. Uh, so Roberto and his team is representing Catania. And last but not least, the Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology, represented by Joseph, who have been a key player in developing e infrastructures in that region. So what I'm going to do now is just whiz through the project highlights. Um, it won't take too long, I hope. And I hope it's something that you can um, uh, find interesting. Um, all the material I'm about to present to you is linked to links on our website. Um, so I encourage you to please browse the website. It's, well, there's a lot there. So we essentially are composed of four work packages, plus one that shall not be mentioned, the, ma the management work package. 
support community services and training, all targeted at developing and energizing science gateways in Africa. Um, the first one is support. Well, the, the, the support activity is all about creating the educational materials. Also then monitoring how infrastructure usage is changing in Africa, and there's a survey that OMO has been leading there. And then importantly, to main compli maintain compliance with other initiatives to basically ensure that we are not going tangential to other ICT, ICT developments in the area. So the training materials, um, there are many things here. There's application development guides, uh, open access repository development guides, e-infrastructure development guides. Basically, out of the box, if you follow those um, educational resources, um, you will have your own infrastructure and science gateway. Um, admittedly, you have to have the resources to run these on, but for the very first time, these have been all pulled together into one convenience area to use. There's lots more detail about all that, and here's some examples of the Science Gateway IDE configuration and deployments. Um, but importantly, um, as I say, all 113 um, materials are available. We did an audit pr primarily for the poster over there, and we were quite amazed that we produced so much in such a relatively short period of time. So I encourage everybody to look. Um, rather than just going through lists, everything's deployed um, in training and educational courses, so if you actually go into that uh, part of the um, website, um, that takes you through the sort of courses we've been running in the Hackfest. In terms of community development, there's been a big work package there. Um, one of the most um, exciting developments is the creation of the infrastructure forum, which is based on the open source forum technology called Discourse. That's free to join. We've got many members there already, 213 to be exact. Um, and there's lots and lots of the discussion about how to do it all. And I encourage you all to have a look. And then we support many, many different emerging new communities of practice. So that's an example of the forum. I say 213 members. And then we have a convenient map on the website to show you where we've been and who we're collaborating with. And what I find absolutely wonderful about this project is it seems every month we, a new partner joins us, a new collaboration starts. And there's a real feeling of momentum starting in this area. The services that we've developed, um, the stamp, um, and to be honest, I can't remember who actually made this stamp, but the Made in Saigare stamp we've been stamping all over the place. We thought, well, we'll try a little bit of branding for fun. But again, it's quite nice to see how many new services we've created and how many new applications. But the service work package is quite dense, and what I've got there is some uh, just some brief examples of what we've accomplished. Uh, one of the biggest successes is the SciGay Open Access Repository, which is based on um, standard federated access, um, automation to upload resources, and it's been based on uh, Invenio developed by CERN. So this is an off-the-shelf package that anybody can install, but the key reason for this is how do you make the artifacts of research visible to the world well, if you're at my university, you put it on an open access repository, you assign a DOI, a unique identifier to your document, and because of that, it's now searchable and findable. And I can also put a DOI on me as well, my ORCID ID, so if people can find me, they can then find the artifacts of my research. However, how can you do that in Africa? So we thought it was very, very important to have an off-the-shelf repository technology that any institute, any university, and importantly, any national research and education network can adopt to support the scientists in their area. And more and more of these open access repositories are being deployed through this project. The Science Gateway and Infrastructure Technology is based on the Catania Science Grid framework that was perfected in the last project. But we do not remain idle on this. We continually move forward and Roberta will talk more about this in the next presentation, that it's now evolved into a more modern, if you like, even though the, the, the gateway framework is only a couple, three years old, but it's been transformed into something that can use REST APIs. And of course, if you've got a REST API to a technology, it's a lot more flexible, and you can deploy it in a lot more different contexts with a lot more web-based and mobile application technologies. 
So more of that shortly. And then in terms of linking people together and making deals, we made a deal with data sites so the document object identifiers can be assigned through our project to um, new open access repositories. But importantly, we extended and moved forward the Komodo agreement. Komodo is a security company that issues e-tokens for federated access to e-infrastructures. And it's a small but extremely important thing because without that, you can't run an e-infrastructure. So we've extended that to gaining 5,000 free new licenses that can be used within infrastructures across Africa. We've developed 19 new services, primarily through the champions. And again, you can see that stamp all over the place. And all these services are freely accessible and downloadable to add to your own applications or infrastructures. And many of those have been integrated into the Africa Grid Science Gateway. And again, there are lists that you can look at there. And indeed, the Africa Grid Science Gateway, you can use now. You can get a login. You can log into that and you can play with all the different services that we have available. And then last but not least, dissemination and training. Training is the heart, really, of our project. Um, the rather nice map of Africa over there isn't just a random placement of spots. Those show where we've been in Africa over the last couple of years. And if we had another year, we'd be spreading more out into the Western Central area through collaborations with other projects such as Tandem and Africa Connect 2. But all the events and all the videos, the many, many videos we've had of our presentations are available there for you to have a look at. The website um, is very dense, but it's got lots of things to help you get started. So the Open Science Platform uh, page, you can highlight different parts of the platform to get information on what that platform is and how um, it contributes to Open Science. We've been running various community activities like the Dakar Declaration on Open Science. And can I encourage you to find that and sign it? We've got many institutional signatories. We've got many individual signatories. And the more signatures are to add it to that, the more that that can be used within African governments to show that this is a really important issue to lots of um, universities. We have the service catalogue, which lists what I've been talking about. And then we kind of have a getting startup page, a how can we help you page, where you can click on, click on that. And it's, a, it's an FAQ page that sort of um, answers what we've found in our experience is the most frequently ask, uh, um, asked questions to get started in our work. And then the training. We ran a winter school a year ago, it seems so long ago now, uh, which all the materials are there. It was an online web-based web school. And then from experiences that, we launched the e-research hackfests. Um, again, all those materials are freely accessible. You can take them away now and run your own Hackfest tomorrow, um, if you so desired. Two were run in Italy, uh, at Catania, one in Nigeria with the NREN, and one in Ethiopia with the NREN. And I have to say, the, the move to working with NRENs to, to, to deliver e-research Hackfest was very exciting, because there's now a feeling of embedding what we're doing in the actual communities that need them. And we're hoping that many more NRENs adopt our Hackfests and run many more Hackfests in their own countries. The output from that have been the 35 champions. And again, all materials are free to use. The eSummer Research Hackfest, for example, that's their page, and you can access everything there. We use APIs across the whole thing. And there's the agenda. And all the presentations and all the talks have been videoed. And then, lastly, but more importantly, all the champions that have have joined us. We have detailed bios of all the champions and what they've been doing, what their aspirations are, and most importantly, what they've developed in the project. So for example, we'll talk a lot more about my MyPAR later today, about a, a science gateway application. We'll talk about the Kenyan National Public Health Gateway, which is a novel public health application. And we'll be talking about many more applications that have been deployed in the Africa Grid Science Gateway. So, <laughs> that was the roulette wheel. We won and got summary and conclusions. So just to wind up, uh, we've pushed within our project that African science, open science can benefit Africa by making and raising the awareness of African science to the world. A key enabler of that is, the, is ICT, and we've developed the open science platform to do this. It's a virtuous circle of education, training, and services, and those are some of the statistics that we've created during the project, and we'll hear lots more of that over the next couple of days. 
and we continue to work with other great projects, including Africa Connect 2 and Tandem, to push the word out to other parts of Africa. So um, I hope you have a great couple of days because there's going to be lots and lots of really interesting things to listen to. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs>